this is uh, introductory nuclear physics course and uh, uh, today we are going to talk about fission reactors part two uh, it is uh, um, in continuation of uh, this uh, uh, three series uh, lectures let's uh, recap again the question is uh, how energy the electricity is being produced in uh, nuclear power plants through fission. So last time we were talking about this uh, uh, picture where uh, we see very large and tall uh, towers and uh, these towers are the cooling towers. They are the towers at the secondary uh, loop. At the end of the secondary loop, these uh, towers appear. And uh, the actual nuclear reactor, uh, pressure vessel and the other uh, steam generators and uh, the other uh, important uh, um, parts of the nuclear power plant are in this dome, within this dome and, and uh, this building. And this is a stack uh, associated with the dome to, to cover uh, any exhaust, uh, which is very important to, uh, to depressurize the, the dome. For uh, the question that how the nuclear power plant uh, design is done and how the constructed uh, nuclear power uh, plant produces electricity, there are few things apart from the few that we have already seen. Uh, there is a, a moderator. The moderator is uh, basically a material which, which is used to convert the neutrons the fast moving neutrons uh, to thermal energies. So uh, moderators are employed to convert the, the very fast uh, energy uh, neutrons to become uh, low energy neutrons or thermal neutrons. Uh, they, they, they are in thermal equilibrium with the, with the surrounding. The, that material is called moderator. So this reduction is of energy is done by, by making collisions and several collisions. So scattering uh, cross-section for, for such material is high and the absorption cross-section is low. Uh, such materials are uh, uh, deuterium oxide, the heavy water. Such materials are uh, the graphite and water. All, all the, these are used as moderators. Then we have... Uh, in the in the uh, nuclear power plant, the absorbers, the control rods, they are really to keep the effective multiplication factor equal to one. So production of excess neutrons can be reduced with the help of these control rods, and uh, they are uh, made up of materials that can absorb uh, neutrons. So they have high absorption cross section for uh, the thermal neutrons, as compared to U two thirty five. So cadmium rods are employed, the boron 10 is used, so uh, and indium is employed. So these rods are inserted into the core and the neutrons are absorbed uh, in the control rods. Then there is coolant. The coolant is uh, used to remove the heat from the reactor core and uh, it moves it to somewhere else where it can be made useful. So uh, it carries the heat and the thermal energy um, coolants are uh, to keep the fuel uh, from overheating and meltdown and at the same time they transfer the heat to water uh, to convert it uh, into steam. In certain reactors this uh, thing is uh, uh, under a controlled fashion uh, very high pressure is, uh, is uh, produced within the pressure vessel and uh, water is kept in water state and uh, steam is generated outside this uh, pressure vessel. So water absorbs the energy and it becomes uh, super saturated and this water is allowed to flow uh, through the primary coolant circuit and then it is converted into steam. There are other gases that are commonly used, for example, carbon dioxide and uh, other uh, types of uh, gases that are employed uh, as coolant as well. We have protect, 
protective shield uh, around the reactor. There are multi-layer shielding arrangements in a nuclear reactor, but uh, one um, uh, very large uh, shield is the uh, containment structure, and it prevents the radioactive materials to be released to the atmosphere. Let us look at this uh, 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 picture and study the uh, energy production mechanism in light water reactors. This is typical example of a pressurized water reactor in which the pressure vessel uh, here, we see the pressure vessel uh, is uh, basically, the, the pressure vessel is, uh, is uh, generating uh, uh, high pressure inside and therefore the coolant remains in a liquid state and the coolant is allowed to flow through this channel, which is a red colored channel, and uh, the, uh, the pressurizer is placed inside this to keep the pressure fixed. And, uh, and the steam generator is employed where this, when it becomes the primary, primary coolant goes through this, it uh, transfers heat to the steam generator and steam is produced inside the generator. The, fuel rods and the fuel bundles and the control rods and the control mechanisms are placed inside the pressure vessel. The whole thing is placed, the pressurizer, the steam generator and the control rods and the mechanism uh, for uh, the pressure vessel and the primary pump, all are placed within the containment structure, uh, uh, which has a high integrity and uh, this uh, whole structure is kept. So primary circuit, um, coolant circuit is inside this uh, containment. The secondary circuit goes out and the turbine is here and the generator is there. The turbine uh, then gives away the water and then it is uh, uh, allowed to pass through the condenser and then the condenser exhausts it outside to the, uh, the those uh, uh, towers, the cooling towers. There is a secondary pump and this secondary pump then uh, takes the uh, coolant uh, back to the steam generator. The electricity is generated with the help of the turbine which converts the mechanical energy into the uh, rotational energy and uh, the, the rotational energy is allowed uh, to, to generate uh, electricity and uh, electricity is passed to the, to, to the city. So pressurized water reactor is, uh, is uh, uh, operating in this manner. Similarly, if we look at the boiling water reactor, the boiling water reactor has similar structure in which the core, the core nuclear reactor core is placed inside the, the pressure vessel, which is called reactor vessel. But this reactor vessel is not at that high pressure. Since it is not at that high pressure, the steam can be generated in the top uh, part of the reactor vessel and the coolant, the water enters uh, into uh, the reactor system uh, as, a, as a liquid. So there are two phases. The one is the liquid phase and the other is the steam phase. Uh, both exist and coexist in this boiling water reactor where the water is allowed to boil, the pressure is not that high and uh, um, the steam uh, goes directly to the turbine and then to the condenser and then uh, the water is condensed and there is one. This uh, arrangement is relatively simple, but uh, the efficiency gets low because of this uh, uh, two-phase uh, system. The generator again generates the electricity and uh, it is with the help of the turbine that rotates and generator uh, produces the electricity and it is allowed to uh, be given to the grid. And then uh, the city uh, uh, uses this electricity. You can see another difference is that the control rods are uh, really inserted from the bottom, uh, not from the top. Uh, in a boiling water reactor because uh, uh, liquid phase of the of the of the coolant is here and uh, it is more effective uh, for the moderation as well therefore uh, the control is uh, is kept here 
so that uh, the controlling can be done with the help of more uh, moderation where, where uh, it is possible to, to uh, operate it effectively. If we look at a pool type research reactor from the top, uh, it uh, generally looks like this. Uh, there are uh, beams and ports that are going and lowered in, into it. And uh, at the bottom, you can see a, a grid-like uh, uh, structure in which the nuclear reactor core is placed, and it is going down further. There are several loops of uh, water coming in and going out, and we can have we can have many other mechanisms available where the samples and the things can be lowered. But this much is the reactor structure. Uh, uh, the top uh, is uh, region is uh, for the control and instrumentation, and this is termed as a bridge on which the uh, radiation level is very, very low uh, because of this uh, very deep uh, uh, water pool. Such a reactor is called a pool type research reactor in which uh, the nuclear reactor is placed at the depth of a, a very large uh, pool. Again, pool type research, uh, research reactor when it is operating at power, it, uh, it has a, a bluish glow around the reactor core and uh, uh, whitish blue, blue color uh, is emitted uh, from the charged particles creating the uh, Cherenkov uh, radiations. If we look worldwide nuclear power uh, production, then we can see here that the concentrations around the Europe uh, and uh, North America and uh, uh, in the neighborhood of uh, of uh, Korea and uh, the the South Korea and uh, the Japan and China is uh, visible. Pakistan has uh, uh, also uh, uh, nuclear uh, reactors, and similarly, India has a uh, few few nuclear reactors. In Africa, only the uh, nuclear reactors are at the uh, tip of uh, this. Uh, the uh, South African uh, region has this, and high concentration is visible in Europe and also in Russian states. It uh, provides about 20% of the electricity worldwide. It is uh, um, basically uh, where the 7% of the world's total energy usage is uh, through the nuclear power. The cost is currently similar to the fossil fuels. Uh, nuclear reactors uh, have uh, very low emissions and uh, zero emission of smog or uh, CO2. There are 400, more than 440 nuclear power plants uh, that are operating in 31 countries. More than 30 are under construction and they are producing about 351 uh, billion watts of uh, electricity, I mean to say 10 to the power 9 watts of electricity. As I have already shown you the this schematics uh, for a pressurized water reactor, let us talk a pretty, very briefly how uh, a nuclear reactor or a type of a nuclear reactor is working and uh, we are going to go through few types in this lecture. There are uh, more than 300 operable nuclear reactors uh, of uh, power generation type and several hundred thousands are uh, really being employed by the naval propulsion systems. Uh, the design of PWR basically came, the pressurized water reactor design came uh, as a submarine power plant to run uh, and uh, produce energy for, the, for a submarine so that it remains submerged in water. The fuel is UO2, uranium dioxide, which is low enriched, about three, between three and 4% uh, uh, of U235. PWRs use ordinary water, both as a coolant and moderator. 
the design has a primary cooling circuit and it flows through the core under very high pressure. Therefore, water is in the liquid state. There is also a secondary circuit. You can see here a bluish circuit, this bluish circuit in which the steam is generated to drive the turbines and to generate the electricity. So that's all in all about the pressurized water reactor and how the uh, energy is generated from the fissionable uh, UV35. The pressurized water reactor has a fuel assemblies of 200 to 300 rods each. These are arranged vertically in the core and there are 100 and 50 to 250 fuel assemblies with a total of 80 to 100 tons of uranium. Water in the reactor uh, core uh, can uh, reach uh, to 325 degrees centigrade and still will be in water uh, form, uh, the liquid form, because of the high pressure. We keep the uh, water under uh, about 150 times atmospheric pressure to prevent from boiling. So the pressure vessel must be very good, should have no leakages. Pressure is maintained by, by the uh, steam in a pressurizer. And uh, there is a pressurizer in the loop. The primary cooling uh, circuit uh, water acts also as a moderator. So it slows down the fast produced neutrons to thermal neutrons, and these thermal neutrons become very effective to cause fission. The secondary system, shutdown system, has the boron to the primary circuit, and then it can be used. The boiling water reactor shown here has a single circuit in which water is at the lower pressures. Therefore, pressure vessel is about 75 times the atmospheric pressure. Water boils in the core at about 285 degrees. Reactor is designed to operate with 12% to 15% of water in the top part of the core as a steam. So there is a steam here, but in the lower part it is water. With less moderation effect, it is less efficient. It also uses uranium dioxide as fuel, slightly enriched fuel. Water acts as a moderator and water acts as a coolant. BWR, the boiling water reactor, fuel assembly has 90 to 100 fuel rods. There are about 750 assemblies and up to 140 tons of uranium. So the core is bulky. It has uh, a mechanism uh, in which the steam is directly given to the steam generator because steam is produced and steam is given to the steam generator. But there is a pump and there is a system in which the, co the, the, the coolant is allowed to uh, circulate. Another type of uh, uh, fission uh, power plant is pressurized heavy water reactor, PHWR. It is also called Kendu type. It is a Canadian design, therefore its name came as a Kendu. The uh, reactor was developed in 50s in Canada. The pressurized heavy water reactors use natural uranium. That is 0.7% uh, enriched uranium. Do not need enrichment. And it is oxide, the uranium oxide fuel. But they need more efficient moderator then. Water cannot be used as a moderator. Heavy water is employed. And uh, the reactor produces more energy per kilogram of the mined uranium than any other design. With the Kendu reactor system, the moderator is enriched uh, rather than the fuel is enriched. So moderator is in the large tank called uh, Calendria, which is penetrated by several hundred 
thousands pressure tubes as shown horizontal tubes. So if you look from the side view, you will see a circular uh, cylinder's uh, face. Cylinder is inside. And these are really where the fuel rods are placed. And inside, the rest of the system is with the moderator. These channels are also cooled by the flowing heavy water under high pressure, about 100 times the atmospheric pressure. And then steam is generated and employed. The Kendo fuel assembly has about 37 half meter long fuel rods. They are ceramic fuel rods, you have two fuel rods with the zircari tubes. And uh, this, with these support structures, they form about 12 bundles lined end to end in a fuel channel, uh, forming just like the fuel bundle uh, configuration. So this is the face of the calendria, which is going deep into the picture. And the tubes are visible here with the numbers and nomenclatures. Few are blocked and closed, and the rest are being uh, uh, repaired here. The online fueling is possible with this. There are machines that can um, uh, be connected to this, and the bundles are allowed to pass through these, these uh, tubes end to end, and then can be collected at the other end. Advanced uh, gas cooled reactors are uh, other type of uh, reactor systems that were really developed in uh, Great Britain. These are the second generation of British gas cooled reactors, AAGRs. Here, the moderator is graphite. The carbon dioxide is used as a primary coolant. The fuel is uranium dioxide with enrichment 2.5 to 3.5 nowadays. The carbon dioxide circulates through the core and it can go to 650 degrees centigrade. Then it goes through the steam generator, tubes outside it, but still uh, inside a concrete and steel pressure vessel. This structure is showing the pressure vessel uh, containment. High temperatures give it high thermal efficiency. Its efficiency is about 41%. As compared to the plant efficiency of a typical PWR going maximum to 35%. AGRs were developed uh, from the Magnox uh, reactors originally produced as a gas cooled reactors in UK. Here we show the light uh, water graphite moderator reactors. And the design of the, this type of a reactor is uh, where the light water is used uh, as a coolant and graphite moderation is done. And uh, the reactor system is a bit complicated, but all things are contained and the pressure tubes are employed. The control mechanisms are given. These types of uh, light water graphite moderated reactors were originally uh, designed as RBMK uh, Soviet Union designs. They were developed from plutonium production reactors. They uh, employ about seven meter long vertical pressure tubes that run through graphite moderated uh, structurally strong uh, systems. They are cooled by water. Water is allowed to boil in the core at 290 degrees. The reactor is allowed to operate at about seven megapascal, uh, which is as much as BWR's uh, pressure. Fuel is low enriched uranium dioxide uh, made up of uh, fuel assemblies that are about three meters to four meters long. 
the moderation is large with the help of fixed tray fights. Uh, the excess boiling can happen and it reduces the cooling and the absorption. So there is a problem of positive feedback that can happen. And that is why they were never built by the uh, Europeans uh, or other countries. And they were not encouraged except in Soviet Union. Where the natural uranium or low enriched uranium was available and they used the graphite and the light water and natural uranium system to make their system critical and their uh, their system became um, such that uh, it had the multiplication factor larger than one. The fast breeded reactors are uh, the next uh, vision for uh, the nuclear reactors. These reactors have an intermediate heat exchanger system. Here, IHX is shown. The reactor core, the, the control rods, the vessel containing the reactor is similar. The primary circuit is similar. This, this secondary circuit is similar. But then there is another circuit. So for fast breeder reactors, you see the heat transfer systems, the first uh, heat transfer system in which the intermediate heat exchanger is employed. And then the second uh, cooling system, which is connected to the steam generator. And uh, the steam is allowed to go to turbine and this is the third loop. So there are one, two, and three loops. In first loop, the sodium is used as a coolant. In other uh, loop, the uh, intermediate heat exchanger has the sodium uh, potassium loop. And in third, uh, again, uh, water as a coolant is employed. The fast neutron breeder reactors are uh, such systems that uh, do not have really the moderator uh, within the reactor core. They utilize fast neutron spectrum to generate power. The power is generated from plutonium or the plutonium plus uranium uh, which is uh, very low enriched. It makes more uh, uh, use of uh, U-238 uh, isotope than any other thing. Plutonium dioxide and uranium dioxides are used as fuel and the liquid sodium is coolant. They are uh, used to produce more fissile material that is plutonium is produced and that is uh, why they are called breeder reactors because they produce more uh, plutonium as compared to what they consume. Therefore, it is a self-sustaining system in which the fuel is consumed, but it is also produced. While um, they get more than 60 times as much energy from their original uranium as compared to the normal reactors, but they are really expensive to build because of the sodium loops and the pool for the sodium. And sodium can catch fire and sodium water interaction is really a problem. So the steam generators in this region are really the problem. And the heat exchanger, the intermediate heat exchanger has to be added. So the whole uh, bargain is expensive. After going through these types of reactors and the systems uh, that uh, are really available for fission uh, energy conversion into thermal energy and subsequently into electricity, we see three generations that have already appeared. The first generation is where, uh, where in 50s and 60s reactors were originally developed. And uh, the last one of that type has shut down in UK. Most of them use natural uranium, graphite, heavy water, water for moderation and uh, cooling. Generation two type reactors are really typical uh, uh, that are present to, to the uh, large sum in USA and most are operating uh, 
in, in Europe as well. They are typically enriched to 3 to 5 percent and most commonly cooled and more moderated by water and are under the pressure. So pressurized water to, to, to either no boiling or some boiling is happening. They are all the generation two. The generation three is the advanced reactors that are evolving now from the first few generations that were operating in Japan, China, Russia, and UAE. Uh, we are expecting these uh, the third generation with with a large uh, nuclear reactor core, the capacity to produce more electricity, and the efficiency going beyond uh, forty percent. If we look at the data of nuclear power plants, uh, according to the coolants and moderators and the fuel and the electricity produced, then we see the pressurized water reactor is at the top. Boiling water reactor comes as a next uh, important uh, reactor type. Pressurized uh, heavy water reactor, the Kendu type, which employs the natural uranium and heavy water, the light graphite or uh, light water reactor, which uh, has a graphite moderation, uh, is primarily with the Russians. They are using enriched uranium dioxide, water and graphite. Advanced gas pool reactors are really uh, in United Kingdom. And uh, fast neutron reactors and high temperature gas cooled reactors are with the Russia and China. And uh, they are really the experimental uh, types and in stages uh, where the enriched uranium and the uh, coolants like helium or liquid sodium are being employed. So all in all about 440 nuclear power plants roughly speaking as uh, of uh, data uh, of uh, 2020, we see uh, uh, are producing electricity from, from the fission reaction. And about uh, 400 uh, uh, gigawatt uh, electric power is being produced. Um, uh, this is a huge amount of uh, energy which is being produced through the process of of a fission and uh, the controlled fission is really a great success. We stop here with uh, this thought that uh, in our uh, closing lecture on nuclear power plants, we will try to sum the discussion on how the multiplication factor influences how the nuclear uh, Power can be estimated with the help of flux, the cross section, the reaction rates, and how uh, the types of nuclear reactors are changing the shape of uh, uh, electric uh, power generation around the world. Thank you so much.